Alright, hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Justine with Blue Jay Orchids. I bought a mic, so this is... I've played around with it a little bit, but this is my first time using the mic. And have a newer plant. This is... I forget how to say the beginning, but it's Princess Connie Na something something. Let's see. If that's not close, I'll get a picture of it at the end. But bought this recently from Palmer's and we are going to mount it on this cool piece of wood right here. So I think I'm going to take it out of the pot, clean it up a little bit, which is why I have this and this and kind of get it about here-ish. So we'll see. But the reason I have the mic is so you can hear me better. And then also thoughts. Probably should have a bag or something. Yeah. I'm going to get a bag to get rid of the media. So. Be right back. <clears throat> Alright, we're back. Just found this to throw the loose pieces away. Have zip ties too. So I watered it, and I'm just trying to get it out of here. Just kind of massaging the pot some. I'll move this so you can see better. Just kind of trying to push it out. I'm not too worried about the roots because it has new growth coming in and it's a hybrid so it's not like a Cattleya species that it's done growing it's probably it's pretty much almost always in growth mode brassavoles are pretty hardy and then there's different ways to mount this is what works for me in my environment and there's multiple ways to do things. Just because you have a different way doesn't mean someone else's way is completely wrong. Alright. So done with that. I'm gonna put this so I don't lose that somewhere. And I'm gonna get rid of all the loose media. I'm not too concerned if there's some media that's stuck there. Some people say you gotta have it completely clear of everything. I'm not completely worried on that. Some people also cut away like any and all extra roots. A little messy. But yeah, just getting the media out of here for right now. And then while I do this also, it just kind of came to me recently that, you know, show season coming up and everything, it would maybe be nice to kind of give people an idea of what to expect and proper show etiquette, let's say, if that makes sense. And also as far as how to pick out like a healthy plant, would that be something everyone would be interested in? Yes? I'm just going to pretend you guys said yes. So as far as picking out a healthy plant, one couple things that I personally have learned is look at the, the pseudobulbs, which is, you know, how they're growing. Look at the roots. Look, try to look at the overall health of the plant. You also want to see, like, do you have new growth? So this has new growth here, new growth here, new growth, new growth, good root system. And it had spikes, so this flower here, another spike here, could do a spike on this one. And just overall good plants. I mean, it has some dead roots in the center, that's normal, that's to be expected. And I'm going to cut away some of this stuff here. But like the leaves are all clean. 
And obviously you can't always look at the roots unless it's a bare root that you're buying. But you also kind of want to go with your guts. So there, I'm sure I have a dehydrated Cattleya I could show you. Yeah. I will show you when I'm done mounting. So I'll get in more to how to pick out a healthy plant towards the end. And then as far as etiquette, I mean, the key thing is just be kind. I mean, these people are at shows, the vendors that is, you know, trying to make a living. And I'd say for the most part, the majority of the vendors I've dealt with have all been great. Sometimes at shows, it might seem like they're not paying attention to you, but it's very overwhelming at shows. They can't possibly answer all your questions at the shows. And sometimes I just don't think they hear you. It's pretty intimidating. At least with my first shows, it was pretty intimidating. But as you go, more and more you get used to it. And I'd say for the majority of the time, like the actual orchid people are pretty nice. You get a few crazies here and there, like everything. Like my husband, I told him to pick out some plants before. And he would find one and then someone would grab it right from under his nose. So that kind of, as a beginner for him, it kind of discouraged him. Which is understandable. That can be kind of discouraging. But I mean, majority of people I don't think are doing that. But yeah, I would say just treat the vendors with courtesy and respect. And most of the time they'll give it back to you. And then as far as like haggling, I don't really haggle because I know most of the vendors and I most of the time I feel like the prices are pretty fair. But as far as haggling, I'd say if you feel comfortable paying the price for the orchid, just if you feel good about the orchid and the price for the orchid, I'd say go ahead and get that one. But yeah, if you feel comfortable paying the price for the orchid and you feel comfortable with the plant, I'd say get it. You can probably get either a smaller version of that same plant somewhere else, or sometimes you'll see a different price somewhere else. But it's all about what you personally want. Do you want a big blooming specimen, or do you want a seedling that you can grow? I'd say for your average beginner, it's better to get an established plant as long as it's not too expensive because an established plant is going to have an easier time adapting some of the seedlings are going to be not more sensitive and stuff All right. so we got most of the media out of here now while i was babbling with my random thoughts see pretty good and now I'm going to cut off some of the extra roots that just look a little bit like they're not going to grab on. <clears throat> and then these aren't the best clippers, but I'm going to buy them at some point. Let's see how this does with the wind. Oh, it still works. So just want to make sure I get all of the thing pretty well heated and sterilized. Not wrong way. There we go. It's pretty windy, so I'm just kind of doing it extra long, making sure I'm getting as much of it covered as possible. I want this thing hot and clean. Because this is when you can really affect your plants by not doing proper sterilization techniques when repotting or messing with them. 
So I'm just going to kind of count to like 30 while moving it around. And then obviously don't touch the blade, it's going to be hot. Alright, that should be good. Let's see. Just kind of cutting away some of the old roots in the center. And then, like I said, some people will just cut off a bunch of roots, but I'm just kind of going for more of the base roots. Because, I mean, it's going to be mounted. It's not like it's in a pot decaying. Okay, I mean, obviously there's still some damaged roots, but overall I'd say that's fine. Uh, I want a little bit more. All right, and then the fun part. Then with this for now. I mean, the pseudobulbs look fine. Not gonna mess with those. Put this here. Move this out of the way. Get this kind of here. All right, so I got new growth here, here. Nice to kind of see. Kind of liking this. So, so you're going to have it stand like this. Yeah, kind of like that. I mean, I could go like this, but kind of liking this. Because see, then it can grab on faster and crawl. Like that. So just going to weave. Okay, don't want to screw up the new growth. All right, I see a little spot. Stay. Get some long zip ties. You could drill through the wood, but I'd rather have the wood just stay solid because I am going to stand it. I'm not going to hang it or anything. So put you like that. And then you also could wait till this isn't spiking or blooming. It'd be less stressful on the plant, but I mean, like I said, this is a hybrid, so I'm not too concerned about how it's going to do. Sure it's where I want it. 
Yeah, pretty happy with that. Now just secure it. Then depending on how secure it is. So just so it's really secure, I'm going to run a zip tie going this way too, because I want to display it like this. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think this will be cool as it takes over. Okay, so, I mean, it's not really moving that much now. I'd say it's pretty secure. Then it should grab on pretty good, let's see. Not too much wiggle. And then I can trim these off, and then as it grabs, I'll take these off. But, here we go. Yeah, fairly happy. Maybe not the best, but it works. And then for right now, I'll just put this on the zip tie. So we have the tag. And then I will talk to you guys maybe while we look at some... A few other things in Bloom we could look at while I kind of finish my train of thought. You know how I get. Train of thought's kind of always all over the place. <coughs> but yeah, there we go. That's how I mounted the Princess Kaya whatever. So, there we go. Okay, it might be a little all over the place for just a little bit because I'm moving some stuff around, checking on stuff after some of the cold. Just kind of doing some orchid chores. You know, looking for spikes, looking at health, figuring out where stuff likes to be. This is a big Oncidium species I got from Bach Tower of all places. Where's the tag? Here we go. Spatulatum. So, got one spike on it. I don't think I have it in enough sun, so I moved it into some more sun. This is just, you know, like Denphalaenopsis type here. Uh, let's see. But there's always something to do. Just looking at the health, looking at you know, spikes and everything. Admiring some stuff that is still blooming. Uh, trying to decide where I want to put this. Because I can see it if I put it there. Just the question on if it gets too much sun. Hmm. Hey, that's kind of cool. And then it's right by a sprinkler thing. Should probably be somewhat shaded for a little bit though. 
Mm, decisions, decisions. And then, I mean, I think it would be okay here. The question is just if it would get knocked over. I guess I'll put it on the inside for a little bit. Looks like there's an opening over there. Just give it a little bit of time to go from shade cloth to like my full sun area. See, it's a little low there though. I don't necessarily like that. Hmm. Hmm. Like I said, decisions, decisions. Changing my mind and still not talking about what I'm supposed to talk about. This is pretty much what I do most of the time when I play with orchids. Just kind of move stuff around all the time. Okay, and it's harder to do it with one hand. This can go over here. Oh but yeah, I was going to talk about healthy orchids, so... Or is one of my many dehydrated orchids. Yeah, this blooming. Get a little bloom on this. Okay, Catleas, Catleas. Okay. So see this shriveling? on the old growth. A good grower that actually waters doesn't have the shriveling. I mean, this is doing okay. This was from the red lens. The new growth is good. But, I mean, from the transport and me growing it, oh, it has some ants in it, yay. Um, it's a little stressed with me. But it's okay. I mean, this one's a little better. But you can still see how, like, the growth is shriveled. That means it's having a little bit of problem with watering, which I don't water enough, so that would be most of the problem. But you can see the new growth is good. So if you could get a plant where it looked all like the new growth, where it's nice, plump, and healthy, you can see the leaves are in pretty good shape. As long as you have most of the growth like this, like the new growth, it's a good plant. If all the growth looks like that, depending on the price, I would maybe reconsider. So hope that kind of helps give you an idea. Oh, we'll sneak this back here. And then these, I'm not sure. These I've been adapting to my sun and I'm trying not to overexpose them too soon. But we are in winter so I don't get as much um, sun in this area in winter. So I think what I might do, let's just leave this here for right now. Hello, uh, power mode again. We'll leave this here for right now and if it ends up burning we'll readjust we'll do that yeah, i think it looks pretty cool and again i'm going for a certain look so there's certain things i could have done differently but it should adapt and that should be kind of fun this is golden peacock it's a little beat up looks like some thrip grazing and just some weathering but for a little thing, it's already bloomed for me twice. It's still kind of struggling to establish, but it's hanging on there. And it's Golden Peacock Orange Beauty. Don't really see much else going on here. Oh, I guess I do have this Boothly Venice again some thrip damage but first time bloom for me was a bag baby but yeah, there's the name 
Boothly, Venice. Don't see anything else quite going on. Alright, come on. Have Charlie. Charlie. First time blooming. Mini Vanda type from Moats. <clears throat> Pretty happy with that. And then I sprayed recently, so see those little black bugs? This could be dead thrips. Very pretty first time, <clears throat> excuse me, first time bloomer for me. Still has a bunch of buds to open. I like it because how the leaves look. It's a fun little plant. And here's the name, and then it does have a cross name now, I think. Just very fun flowers. Flowers are a little beat up and have some spray and weather on them. But still pretty fun. Name is... Tony Tan King Yam in an Orchid 360 pot. My son is out here playing with bubbles. And I'm just looking at some flowers. Well, that's all I got for you guys. This is um, my Darwin R charm one more time just because I really like it right now and it opened very nicely. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, um, like, subscribe, leave comments. And I want to shout out to one of my subscribers, Claudette. Thank you so much for the division of one of your plants. I got it from Catherine and Tristan. Very much appreciated, uh, appreciative of it. Thank you so much. And as always, everyone, keep growing. Bye.